I always wondered how MMO games are created. I used to play a game uh, which is called Travian 10 years ago and I always imagined how is this game working. I remember back then I started learning PHP with this motivation to create a game like Travian. I tried to recreate this game but I remember there were so many challenges which were hard for me to solve as a kid. Or at least I solved them with a very dumb idea which had a hard time for handling one online user. Some months ago, I felt a little bit down in my life and I revisited my old hobby and came across some RPG games like Rise of Kingdoms and Call of Spartans. They are unique in different ways. Rise of Kingdom is more like a strategy RTS game and Call of Spartan is more is mainly focused on upgrading and researching for more a stronger army but i love them unfortunately i spent a lot of money on them and my depression got worse i should have spent that money on a trophy session i guess but anyway i fall in love with this genre again and i wanted to revisit those old challenges i have professional experience as a software engineer now and i should understand them better First challenge for me was how they are showing such a huge map in a tiny and weak mobile device. It's not a PC with lots of cooling solution and power. I started working with Unity again. My first challenge was how I can show a huge map on a mobile device. Unfortunately, I forgot to save the project, but uh, I tried to demonstrate it with some painting. Imagine we have a board like this. Those tiny blocks represent a tile in our game but our camera can only capture a few of them at a time. One optimization that we can do is that we only show the tiles that are currently visible to our camera. But if we suddenly move the camera, we will see the void for a portion of a second, because there will be a delay until we receive the new information and spawn the new game objects. So it's better to have some padding for buffer. After that, I created a new project. To implement a dynamic system which generates the whole map but only shows those tiles that our camera is staring at. The code is quite messy. It was my first complicated c code after a while and I'm not proud of it. But the algorithm is acceptable. Let's take a look at it. Every time I spawn an object, I keep track of its game object and location in a dictionary so that in future, if we want to check if we have a tile in a specific location or uh, we want its game object, we can access it with a time complexity of big O of 1. Then, 5 times a second, I check all the tiles that new camera position need. And it's quite simple. First in a loop, I define every tile that I need for this new camera location. And for each tile, I mark them as not found tile if I don't have them in the dictionary that I've created. Then I loop over the all of the existing tiles, and for each tile, I check if there are in none of the found and not found sets. I define them as out of range tile and destroy them. And at the end, I instantiate the not found tiles and save them in our tiles dictionary. Then I discovered about Unity's tile map system especially isometric tile maps which fit quite well with this genre of mobile games. I started experimenting with it. It was a little bit complicated for me at first, especially how aesthetic things like tree reacts with dynamic game objects like our player. I spent a lot of time on why the sorting order is not working and after a while, thanks to a YouTube tutorial, I found out I have to change sorting settings in graphic options too. The other challenge for me was how I can have multiple sprites on the same tile. Playing with Z in Vector was a little bit unpredictable, so I decided to have two tiles, one for the ground and the another one for anything on top of it. Because the code were becoming so dirty, I decided to abandon this project and start a new one. In the next Unity project, I felt more comfortable with Unity tile map. I wanted to create a proof of concept for myself that I can implement some of the mechanics of an RTS game, like placing a building or pathfinding. As you can see, I can place a tower whenever I want, and towers have range attack, and if I click on them, I can see the range of their attack in the map. 
And also, I can play with towers and create complicated paths, but my player can find the destination that I want thanks to ASR algorithm. Pathfinding is okay, but it can get confused if we have a complicated path, and I don't want to spend lots of resources on the pathfinding. I can find a better heuristic function later. After I got comfortable with client side, I decided to play with the server side. I decided to implement the server from scratch without any framework or Unity package. First challenge was how Unity is going to interact with our server. The first case usually is using a socket or web socket, but sometimes we can have the same result with HTTP, just we need to use it a little bit clever. There is a simple but quite useful technique called long pulling. It may seem like something fancy or complicated, but in a language like Golang, it's very simple. Let's talk about how long pulling works. Imagine we have two players, player A and player B. Player A sends an HTTP request to our server and asks what's going on. At that time, nothing happened. So server doesn't reply that HTTP request and keeps it open. Be careful that uh, we need to set that request timeout something long, for example, one minute, because we want to keep it open as long as we can. Now, player B wants to attack player A. It sends a normal HTTP request to the attack endpoint. When server receives that request, responds normally to player B and checks if player A has an open connection for listening on events. If it has, responds to that HTTP request with attack notification. This method is very useful, especially in board games or even a chat supports for our website. But we may have more than 10 notifications in a second in our game and establishing new HTTP connection is going to eat our resource and take a while. So let's play with sockets. Our server is more like a Unity project than a website. We have a main loop, just like Unity, that calculates every action in our game. In Unity, this loop runs like 60 times a second if we have 60 FPS. But in our server, we don't need that kind of precision. And I set the tick rate of the server to be 4, which means loop runs and calculates every action in every 250 milliseconds. If we were going to develop an online FPS game like Valorant, we needed server's tick rate to be 128 Hz. But in our game, we don't need that amount of reactiveness. I don't know if you guys want me to talk about the service code. If you want, tell me in the comments and I will make another video and talk about it in details. But if I want to summarize the server, it has a queue for inputs and keeps every action that users do. Then in, in each loop, it reads all of the actions in the previous 250 seconds and applies them to the game. Then it runs the full simulation for every game object that we have and finally creates a snapshot so we can access the maps data concurrent save, safe and without any race condition anytime we want. So now we have a full authoritative server that controls everything in our game. The pros of this method is that cheating is kind of impossible in our game. But the cons is, as you can see, we have a 4 Hz server, so it's like we have 4 FPS in our game, and everything is snappy. Right now, our client is down. I added a feature so it can fill in between frames with a little bit of simulation. Server sends Unity where we are going to go and how much it's going to take, and with a little bit help of c -sharp scripts, it can simulate the entire journey. But we are not exactly synced with our server, so we add a little bit room for error and check if we are too far from the server's coordinate, we teleport the game object to the accurate position, just like when you lag in a FPS game. I hope in the future I can work on this project and share it with you guys on YouTube. It's done. Have a good night.